in my hands, I hold the 1930 edition of the Buwashi, which is the yearbook for Booker T. Washington Senior High School in Overtown, Florida. Allow me to share this excerpt from the section Citizenship and Constitution, which actually was a prize oration in the local Elks Oratorical Contest by student Thomas B. Davis. This excerpt is as follows. Through a span of 60 years, our race has made most rapid strides, showing a keenness and alertness and a brilliancy that is phenomenal. We have accomplished in 60 years what the other race has accomplished in centuries and are now measuring arms with them. As an imitative race, we have absorbed much that is good and much that is bad for our environment. No phase of life has been closed to us, but we today, we must provide for the generations that are to come. Booker T. Washington High School. It was the first high school in South Florida to be recognized by the state as a school, a high school free to all people of color. The first high school at that for people of color in South Florida to offer a program for grades seven to 12. Before Booker T. Washington was created, the highest level that a person of color would have completed in school if they were in South Florida would have been eighth grade. The effort that people of color put toward establishing an educational system for people of color in South Florida is phenomenal. And there are many people to name, but for starters, and to be brief, we have to start with D.A. Dorsey. D.A. Dorsey put his money forward to establish a private school in Coconut Grove, which would eventually become George Washington Carver Junior High School. We also have to give gratitude to people like Arthur and Polly Mays, a couple, a married couple. Arthur only had six weeks of education. Polly had a fourth grade education, yet they pulled their resources together to make a school happen in Goulds. That school would eventually be called Goulds Color School, but today it's known as Mays Community Middle School. If parents wanted their child to excel after the eighth grade or if a student themselves wanted to excel, they would have had to go to a boarding school or a school out of town. Yes, this is a time of heavy racism and separate but equal Jim Crow and whatnot. But one thing was common for everyone, it didn't matter the race. Everyone paid taxes, especially if they owned property. So with that being said, black people, just like their white counterparts, were entitled to get a school up to 12th grade, but they weren't getting it. Yes, the Dade County School Board did exist in the 1920s in early Miami. However, no one of color was actually on it. What the Dade County School Board did, however, they created an auxiliary board. The auxiliary board consisted of prominent people of color, such as Miami's first black millionaire, D.A. Dorsey, the first black to be recognized as a physician in the state of Florida, Dr. William Chapman, and the first black dentist in Miami, Dr. John R. Scott. Although this auxiliary board had no power per se, it was important because it helped to provide important resources to the black community in South Florida when it came to education. So be it an efficient busing system so that colored students can get to the schools that they attended, be it textbooks if they were needed, be it a library if it was needed, be it more teachers if they were needed. The auxiliary board brought these problems and these needs to the table at the school board meetings. Just because these problems or issues were brought to the school board meetings by the auxiliary board didn't necessarily mean A, that they were addressed appropriately, and B, that 
funding was allotted as requested. The auxiliary board had to really, really push, push, push for the things that were needed in the black community. And again, even if they got the things that were needed, many times they were not of the best quality, like textbooks and, or they would get less of. Like instead of getting five bathrooms, the school would get two bathrooms as opposed to the white counterpart that would get five bathrooms. The black community really had to fight to make Booker T. Washington High School happen. The black community was instrumental in protecting the construction site of Booker T. Washington High School to ensure that hate groups like the Ku Klux Klan would not sabotage it. Had the people of color protected, they would set up camp around the campus and they would guard it at night. Events like a hurricane that occurred in 1926 and a bombing proved to be setbacks. But after much trial and tribulation, Booker T. Washington High School finally opened its doors in 1927. I'm sure that this was an exciting time. Students were now able to come from schools like Dunbar, which didn't have a 12th grade. Schools like Dade County Training School, known today as George Washington Carver, which didn't have a 12th grade, and other schools that didn't have a 12th grade. People of color were able to come from these schools to Booker T. Washington to get a better education. In conclusion, I must state that our future stretches before us unknown and unexplored. We are not slaves. We are free citizens in the greatest and richest country on the globe with the right of the ballot in our hand. Can we not hope for far richer and nobler achievements in the years that are to come? Over unknown seas, we sail on the great ship Constitution. Faith is our past, hope is our present, and victory will be our future. Here is the cover of the 1930 edition of the Bawashi. Inside the book, we have, of course, the principal, the first principal, Mr. Granberry. Here is the cover again, a better view. You see the cover in full view. I open the book and I go right to the sports section and I'm gonna to point to Manatee when he was in his sophomore year. He played basketball and football, but I'm just showing his basketball photo. Thanks for watching and thanks for letting me share.